Hello, so the two questions that we get a lot are the following. I've got lots of 2D images of my drone inspection, but the client or the stakeholder can't really make sense of where all these images are. Or conversely, we get another question where, hey, I've created a 3D model for my inspection, but the client or the stakeholder doesn't have all the detail that they require to be able to do this inspection. So in the world where you've got a 3D model that doesn't provide detail, but images that don't provide where they are, how do we bring all of it together and help the end customer make sense of all the drone data? We'll have a look in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Varun from Hammer Missions. And if you've seen our channel before, you might have come across the fact that we cover lots of different topics on the drone industry. And in this particular video, what I want to do is I want to go through the five main steps that you can go through to provide an end-to-end -end drone inspection that helps your end customer or stakeholder make the right decisions using drone data. And ultimately, our job in the drone industry is to make sure that people are able to make better data-driven decisions. And so to be able to identify the right workflows and the right tools is always a good thing. So let's start by looking at a drone inspection. Now this drone inspection could be any form of inspection. You could be inspecting anything from a facade to a solar panel to a, to a refinery to any single structure that you can think about. But the workflow for creating a drone inspection can be very much the same with a few tweaks. So let's have a look at it one by one. So the first step that you need to consider when you're doing a drone inspection is to choose the right drone. Now when I say choose the right drone, I think it's really important to mention here I don't want that people get obsessed by the drone. And ultimately, it's not really about the drone at all. What it's really about is making that data available to the end customer or stakeholder. And to make that data available, we've got to think about where that data originates. And no points for guessing, that data actually comes from the camera, not from the drone. So the first thing you've got to think about is, what data am I trying to provide to my end customer or client? And therefore, what camera do I need to be able to provide that end deliverable? If you're trying to do roof inspections that have something to do with insulation, you've got to actually have a thermal camera. Or if you're trying to do solar inspections for that matter. So you've got to think about what camera do you need? And then you've got to think about what drone can you get that carries that camera? So it's almost sort of like a reverse engineering process where you start with the data and work your way back to the drone by looking at the data, the camera and the drone, as opposed to sort of starting with the drone and then fitting that to your end customer. So really important to make sure you choose the right drone and more importantly, you choose the right camera so that you can get the right data outputs. So once we've got the right drone, the second step in this process, which is really important, is to actually choose the right flight plans. Now, I know that you know it's an inspection, so a lot of people might go, well, I can just fly this manually and I can just take the image in the right places. But the challenge with that approach is that, yes, you'll get all the images, but how are you going to ensure you covered the entire asset and you haven't missed any spots? What if you don't know about the issues beforehand? And even if you've got the 2D images off the right places, how do you tell your customer where those places are? Because ultimately we live in a 3D world and images are only 2D. So choosing the right flight plan is important because what we recommend in a drone inspection is that you should really aim for two different types of data sets captured at all times. Your first data set should be a data set which is essentially mapping or modeling the place. And what I mean by that is that you're able to actually create either a 2D map or a 3D model, if possible, of the site or the asset. So whether it's a facade or a cell tower or a solar panel or any asset that you might imagine, you're able to actually create a 3D model of it because that's like a great way to build context. Now the challenge with the images taken for a 3D model is that they're generally not so good for inspection. So what you also want to do is you want to think about how do you actually supplement that with inspection images? And I'm going to come to that in a second, but the important thing to bear in mind is that maybe you need two different data sets, one for the 3D model and the other one for your detailed inspection images, and you need to figure out the right flight plan. Now, the flight plan is also heavily, heavily influenced by the geometry of the structure you're trying to inspect. So if you're inspecting a solar panel or solar park, maybe you want to go through every single row one by one. Maybe if you're doing a cell tower, you want to go around the cell tower or up and down the cell tower in, a, in an orbit. 
If you're trying to do a facade, maybe you want to go up and down the facade in a vertical 2D grid. If you're doing a roof, maybe you want to go all the different sections of the roof, keeping the orientation the same. So it all depends on what you're really trying to inspect and the geometry of the structure you're trying to inspect will highly dictate your flight plan. And so as a step two, finding the right flight plan is extremely important and sometimes glossed over, which leads to inspections that are good, but they could be way more high quality and they could lead to way more better decisions. So that's step number two. So step number three, now that we've established is that essentially creating your images for the 3D model. Now, we have just said that there's two different data sets that you need to collect. One is for the 3D model and the other one is for the inspection images. And so step three over here is to create the images for the 3D model. And so over here, what's really important is to, again, look at the asset, look at the type of structure you're trying to model and figure out the best flight plan possible to create a 3D model for that particular asset. Now, it's, it's completely okay if you don't get too close to the asset because all you want to do is create a 3D model. And sometimes 3D models are much better if you're not super close to the asset, but also not super, super far away either. And in this particular case, what we really recommend is if you look at the marker of, of having at least a GSD of one centimeter per pixel, that can give you a good trade-off between quality and safety where you don't have to be 10 meters from your asset and you can be you know, 40 meters from your asset and still get a really high quality 3D model. And because the aim of the 3D model is to build context, not to actually do the inspection, you can actually have fewer images for your 3D model to be able to actually do your end deliverable. So step three, create the images required for a 3D model. And it's in fact related to step two as well, because you want to create the right flight plan to be able to create your right 3D models. Um, and then moving on to step four is to actually capture your inspection images. So assuming you've done the first three steps right, what you've now got is the right drone with the right camera, with the right flight plan, and you've created a 3D model um, flight plan to be able to capture all these images and build a 3D representation of the site or the asset. And if you have a 3D representation of the site or the asset, all you need to do now is to actually capture the inspection images. Now, the inspection images are actually the images that you want to capture so that they are the close up as detailed as possible images of the site or the asset. And this could be done by flying up close or you could even do something like using a camera that allows you to zoom or to have a camera that has a really high focal length and a right megapixel resolution that actually allows you to sort of capture details from further away. So there's many different ways of doing this, but and this could be with a flight plan, it could be without a flight plan, it could be semi-automated, but you're essentially trying to capture all of the inspection images. And this is where your hand flying skills really come into play because you can really be creative and whether you've got obstructions on site, trees on site, you can still maneuver around them and capture the right images. So these are all your inspection images that you can also put together as step four in this process. And then moving on to step five, Step five is essentially putting it all together in one unified project. So assuming we've done all of our steps correctly and we've got you know, the right data to both produce a 3D model and then also to be able to do inspections, what you then wanna do is you wanna actually take all of those 3D modeling images and essentially process them into a 3D model using 3D modeling software so whether you're using Hammer Missions or any other software of your choice, the point is you can create a 3D model and this will allow your end customer or stakeholder to build context. And the context is extremely important because you've gone to the sites, you've captured the data, so you have that context mentally, but your, your client or stakeholder may not. And therefore, it's really important as a service to them that you create this context using the 3D model. And once you've got the 3D model, in the same project, what you can do is you can actually bring in your inspection images. And these inspection images don't need to get processed. They can, be, they can be living very happily alongside the 3D modeling images, but these inspection images, they're the ones that actually provide the detail to the end customer or stakeholder. And it's really important to understand that actually these images are extremely important because ultimately, if the, if the end customer or stakeholder is looking to do a documentation of the condition of the site, they need to have those images on file. Like the 3D model is not gonna be sufficient to be able to sort of say, this was the actual state of the asset as of whatever date you captured the asset on. 
you need to make sure you have actual images to be able to supplement that and to be able to sort of keep that on file for the end customer. So those inspection images living alongside the 3D modeling images is what allows you to have the best of both worlds. So you have your 3D model for context and you have your images for detailed reports. And reports is basically the last step in this process. So what you would then be able to do is you'll be able to go through all of your inspection images, you'll be able to see where they are on the 3D model and you'd be able to actually inspect or annotate all of these inspection images with the right markups, with the right comments, with the right sort of information that is required by engineers, surveyors, and all of the great people in our world that maintain buildings to actually take preventative actions on those particular buildings, on those particular structures, and, and actually put that all of that data to work. And one of the things that I always say is that, you know, the drone inspection till that data is put into work or put into motion through the means of some decision is actually just a cost. It becomes a value driver only when that data starts being used to create some plans, to be able to create some form of actual action in the real world with regards to that asset or building. So as long as we can do a good job getting all of our customers and stakeholders to that point, I think we are all ready to be in a win-win situation and that, that drone inspection is no longer a cost, it's actually a net value add. So hopefully this video was interesting. We went through a workflow on how you can get the best of both worlds, create 3D models and also inspection reports for all of your assets whether it's facades, roofs, solar panels, and whatnot. Um, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please do give us a like. I think one of the things that keeps motivating us to, cre to create these videos is the fact that we get so much support from the community out there. So if you do like our videos, give us a like and do subscribe to our channel and feel free to share with anyone that you think might find it interesting. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you as always in the next video of Knowledge Hub.